This is National Native News. I'm Megan Kamrick in for Antonia Gonzalez. Some Native leaders are pushing back against a report that claims to exonerate Catholic high school students involved in a high-profile confrontation last month during a rally on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. The report was prepared by a detective agency hired by a law firm on behalf of the Catholic Diocese of Covington. Diocese leaders say the report's conclusions clear the students of making any offensive or racist statements. The report's authors talked to Covington Catholic High School students and chaperones and reviewed video footage of the incident. Lance Gums, a member of the Council of Trustees for the Shinnecock Indian Nation in New York, dismisses the report as laughable. Gums witnessed the confrontation firsthand and says the students, teachers, and third-party investigators fail to comprehend the extent of disrespect directed at Omaha elder Nathan Phillips as he sang and drummed at the rally. Now, I think that what would behoove the Catholic Church is to sit down with you know, a group of the the indigenous people that were there to discuss what transpired and how to build a better bridge, how to understand a different culture and what, you know, that meant to us to have that young man stand in the way of an elder. The report investigators tried to talk to Phillips but said they did not get a response. They did acknowledge that the students performed a tomahawk chop motion with their arms and joined in with Phillips as he chanted. In a letter to school parents, Diocese Bishop Roger Roger Foyes says the student's reaction to the situation was, quote, expected and one might even say laudatory. A Southeast Alaska tribe has taken the initial steps to begin creating its own tribal court. KNBA's Trip Kraus talks with the tribe's executive director about how two grants will help. The Yakutat Clinkett tribe recently was awarded two grants, totaling a little over $1 million to start their own tribal court system. The tribe's executive director, Nathan Moulton, says it's a demonstration of the tribe's self-determination. You know, we're creating a judicial branch um, within our tribal government, and it, it, it's a huge, a huge step towards um, demonstrating that we are, in fact, a legitimate government. Moulton says Yakutat Clinkett worked with the tribal court system at Central Council of Clinkett and Haida Indian Tribes of Alaska. We've decided to create a partnership agreement with Clinkett Haida Tribal Courts initially to come in and set up a satellite court in Yakutat where the Yakutat Clinkett Tribe would adopt the law and order codes um, from Clinkett and Haida Tribal Court. Molson says the Yakutat Tribal Court system will go a long way for support of crime victims and the perpetrators of the crime, something he thinks is different from the state or federal court system. Because many times what you see in state courts or, you know, even federal courts, the perpetrator never gets rehabilitated. And so what we're going to be able to get um, some low-level criminal offenses into tribal court, and we're, we're able to place more of a focus on rehabilitation and more of a focus on, on, on crime victims and, sa- and serving both populations. Molson says as the tribe's court system grows, it'll be able to develop its own judges and contract out more specialized positions the tribe can't source locally. In Anchorage, I'm Trip Krause. The Cherokee Nation has received a federal grant for up to $6 million for those impacted by opioid abuse. The tribe announced the Department of Labor Dislocated Worker Grant is for $2 million initially. It will help place 50 people in Cherokee Nation Behavioral Health to help expand opioid-related treatment services. It will also help fund training for 250 participants for jobs in health care, manufacturing, hospitality, and construction. The Cherokee Nation has filed lawsuits against retail distributors and manufacturers manufacturers of opioids. The suits argue marketing by manufacturers led to vast overprescribing and distribution of opioids on the Cherokee Nation. For National Native News, I'm Megan Kamrick. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by Ramona Farms, offering wholesome and delicious foods from our heirloom crops as our contribution to a better diet for the benefit of all people. We are honored to share our centuries-old farming and culinary traditions online at RamonaFarms.com. My day one. 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 Day one. Telling inspiring stories of Alaskans and alcohol recovery. Recovery works. Hope starts here. Go to recoveralaska.org to learn more. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.